Today we're going to take a closer look at another semiconductor update. We're going to take a closer look at four companies. First, we're going to start off with Cadence Design. The company just reported earnings yesterday after the market closed. So I want to take a closer look at that. Next, we're going to take a closer look at my favorite semiconductor company, NVIDIA. They did give some updates to export regulations and something important that investors should know. The company also showcased a lot of other information. Next, we're going to take a closer look at Intel, your favorite semiconductor company. There are some updates on some other manufacturing plants here in the United States. And finally, I just want to take a closer look at Microsoft and some increased investments in data center. So all that in today's episode. Let's get started. All right, so the first company I wanna take a closer look at is Cadence Design System. For those that are not familiar, this is the software player that if you are a chip designer, you're most likely using Cadence. We can see the stock right now sitting at $236, pretty much down 1% on the day. Year to date, the stock has done amazing though, up 48%, right? Because everybody is kind of creating chips right now from your typical chip companies to even big tech giants. If we take a closer look at earnings, we do see that Wall Street was looking for adjusted earnings per share of roughly a dollar a dollar twenty. They actually did a dollar twenty six, and the company was also uh, analysts were expecting revenue of one billion. The company barely beat, but one point oh two billion. So they did be on revenue and adjusted earnings per share. Unfortunately, guidance was a little bit weaker than expected, which I do believe is causing most of the stock to drop today. Um, now let's take a closer look at my favorite semiconductor company, NVIDIA. NVIDIA is actually running up a nice amount. Um, uh, I, I wonder what happened uh, here. I really didn't see too much good news. Um, maybe this is one of it. So earlier today on October 24th, Lenovo and, Lenovo and NVIDIA announced hybrid AI solutions to help enterprises quickly adopt generative AI. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. So Lenovo will deliver fully integrated systems that bring AI-powered computing to everywhere data is created from the edge to the cloud, helping businesses easily deploy tailored generative AI applications to drive innovation and transformation across any industry. So this is something we are seeing with NVIDIA right now, right, where they keep making great partnerships to kind of expand their market share in the GPUs and generative AI and the software in the data center market. And this is one that's going to kind of hit all of it, right? They do mention that Lenovo's NVIDIA powered system are optimized to run NVIDIA's AI enterprise software. So right off the bat, we can see that this is going to be a good, nice boost for NVIDIA's software revenue. They do mention that at the center of the company's expanded partnership are two main systems. First is the Lenovo Think system SR675 v3 server and the second is the think station px workstation so we can see it's more of a server and also a workstation they kind of give us a little bit of what are the what are the specs of the of the server the server will include obviously nvidia's l40s gpu probably one of my favorite products that nvidia announced um, this year also it's going to use nvidia's dpus and nvidia's networking solution so now we're seeing it right so first the the, the partnership helped out with nvidia software solutions we can see it also in the hardware solution not just in the gpus but the dpus and the networking side now if we take a closer look at the workstation the workstation is a beast in my opinion um they do believe that it will exp bring expanded ai capabilities and data center performance to the desktop by enabling up to four times nvidia rtx 6000 ada gpus in the system uh so that's going to be a crazy machine i'm pretty sure that's going to run over thirty thousand dollars for a desktop that's insane in my opinion they do mention that additionally lenovo and nvidia will create next generation systems based on the flexible nvidia mgx modular uh so overall in my opinion and this is just great news for the company as they continue to make partnerships. And all these partnerships, in my opinion, are very small, right? Not, not very small, but compared to its total revenue, it's very small. But when you start adding very small 
partners here, 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 then it becomes a big portion of revenue growth. And that's what we're seeing here with NVIDIA. Before we go any further, I do want to say thank you for the support. If you haven't, make sure to hit the thumbs up, the subscribe button. It does help me out a lot. I'm trying to hit 5,000 by the end of the year. I do have an exclusive membership program with weekly videos on the semiconductor industry. Click join to learn more. Special offer at fool.com slash Jose. Free newsletter at josenaharo.substack.com. And free semiconductor news at semiconductorwatch.com. Now we're going to take a closer look at some serious note. This is something that might be more on the bearish side, but we can see the stock market doesn't really care much. So they did announce that effectively, immediately, um, we're talking here about the regulations. So normally um, we talked, we heard about the regulations last week on October 18th. And usually when new export regulations, United States government tends to give the companies impacted at least 30 days before, um, before those requirements requirements go in place or those export restrictions go in place. And Nvidia mentions that the United States government today announced that, hey, look, those are actually effective immediately, not during the 30 day period, right? So this is impacting the companies A100, A800, H100, H800, the L40S, which I was surprised. And also, uh, I'm, I'm surprised that they didn't include the RTX 4090 here. Uh, but the company did give some good news. They do mention that still, given the strength, even even if it came 30 days earlier, the company does not anticipate any kind of meaningful impact to its financial results in the near term. And the company keeps using near term. And that's what I do believe in the upcoming quarters, maybe analysts, if you are an analyst and watching this, I'm not sure if you, if any would be, but if you are, make sure to ask NVIDIA, hey, when, what do you mean by near term? Is that going to be one quarter? Is that going to be two quarters, three quarters? When do we really start to see the impact of these kind of regulations? Because the man might be not dwindling, but you might start to build up that supply that maybe might hinder, um, that might hinder some of the revenue growth in the future. Now, the next thing I want to take a closer look at is yesterday we saw reports that NVIDIA is announcing the RTX 4080 Super, and the 4080 Super is expected to feature roughly 20 gigs of memory. So the first thing I, I, I thought about this is, hey, look, the 4090 was no longer being able to, uh, was, saw some export restrictions. Maybe the 4080 doesn't fall in line with the restrictions, and what the company is trying to do is create new solutions or new GPUs that have high performance. We know the 4080 has high performance, but when it comes to AI workloads, things like large language model, another thing that you really need is high memory. Um, so I do believe a 20 gig memory card is a uh, GPU card is also gonna see the benefits of it getting used in maybe AI workstations, in AI workloads. Uh, so maybe not just in international regions, but here in the United States, as we are seeing this continued growth of AI workstations, of AI, AI desktops, and the continued need for either 4090s, the L40, um, the AD6000s, and I do believe because if they do come out with this 20 gig 4080, we are gonna see a strong demand for the 4080 Super, so that's good news. Next, we I talked about this in my main channel, so NVIDIA is to start selling ARM-based CPUs to PC clients by 2025. Super, super bullish here. The main reason, it does seem like Microsoft is it's one of the players really trying to push this because they are losing PC market share to Apple, right? And it's M-series processors. I do believe if someone was to give a run to their money in the ARM-based um, product, it would have to be NVIDIA. Uh, so I do believe this is good case. This is not going to be the first time we're seeing ARM-based products on Windows. I, I did see some reports that, hey, look, it, this is not bad news because um, the Windows market is basically, is basically x86. While that is true, there are numerous solutions out there where in the x86 uh where in the windows based operating system we do have a lot and a lot of arm solutions um qualcomm has some i forget some some other players i believe google has them uh so it's not something to i i i, I do believe that this definitely is a nice growth opportunity for nvidia and like i mentioned in my main channel i do believe nvidia is going to focus probably on the ai workloads on the high margin uh, pc markets at the beginning and maybe maybe later on try to really push into more cost effective or cost or, or lower cost products. But I do believe at the beginning, NVIDIA is going to focus on the big expensive um, 
tier laptops and tier desktops. Uh, so next, I want to take a closer look at Intel. Intel is up roughly 2.2% today. The first thing that I want to take a closer look at is Intel did announce some new updates to their semiconductor development facility in um, Oregon, Oregon, Oregon. Um, and they do mention that they are going to be expanding. And this is going to be the place that the world's first high numerical aperture extreme ultraviolet high and a EUV lithography tool is planned to dock this year. And I don't know if it's because I am an American, but just that feeling of hearing that advanced semiconductor manufacturing is coming back to the United States. And we're going to be one of the leaders to have one of the first machines. I think is pretty exciting. Uh, again, maybe I'm just geeking out because I am an American and an electrical engineer. Um, but I do think for all the nonsense I might give Intel, they are definitely doing a lot of good here in the US. Uh, overall, off market, but Intel right now sitting at $34. I do have investments in AMD and NVIDIA. For those reasons, I'm not invested in Intel, but I do believe if this company ever drops below $30, I might start a position. The other thing I wanna take a closer look at is Intel announced what they call, it's an incentive program. They call it the PC Acceleration Program. And this PC Acceleration Program is an initiative designed to accelerate the pace of AI developments across the PC industry. The reason they wanna do this is right, it's gonna allow them to sell more CPUs, more processors, more cores, more, more, more computational power, right? So in theory, this, while it does seem like Intel is doing good, at the end of the day, it comes with, hey, if this does well, then they're gonna need our products a little bit more. These resources, they do mention, will help the ecosystem take full advantage of Intel's core ultra processors technology, which are expected to be released December 14th. Uh, they do mention that, hey, look, Intel's at the forefront of the AI with CPUs, with GPUs, and NPUs, which are newer processing units, and obviously the software market. Then they announced a, a, a nice load of companies that are already included in this program Big players like Adobe, big players like Zoom, big players like uh, Rewind AI. Uh, so we definitely see this kind of be a huge growth. I do believe this is just, again, if you're adopting faster AI generation into laptops, into software solutions, uh, then you're gonna see the increased growth of maybe PCs needed for those types of workloads. So I do believe that's why Intel's really pushing this. The final thing I wanna take a closer look at is this report that Microsoft to establish nine new data centers in Australia, a move that's gonna be roughly $3.2 billion. The only reason I wanted to talk about this is obviously you guys know I'm big into semiconductor companies, and if someone's spending $3.2 billion, you know who's gonna get some money there, some Nvidia, some AMD, some Intel. So I just wanna showcase that, look, there's still a nice bullish trends in data centers. We can see Microsoft, one of the top players, still expanding, and I'm pretty sure all the other players are also doing that. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care, have a good day, and see you next time.